you have contracts uh, dealing with union contracts uh, from the various unions that we have negotiated with this year. And uh, I believe Mr. that Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan is here and can address those issues for the Board of Selectmen. Good evening. So I'll start with you, Mr. Chairman. What I'll do is go over um, each of the agreements, and then one at a time as we go through them, uh, I've got a proposal, suggested uh, uh, language for your approval of the board, uh, should you decide to do that. If that's how you'd like to proceed, I can do that. Yep. So the first one I'll begin with is the uh, tentative agreement with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Globally, I'll say, um, for folks at home, that this is a process negotiating the contracts that uh, we began, the, the group that was assigned by the board to negotiate, including Mr. Bean, myself, Mr. Geralt, and we were assisted by our finance director, Ms. Pulliam, as well. And Ms. Barnes joined us for a number of those as well to educate herself on the process as we went along. Over several months, we met with each of the three collective bargaining groups that were moving forward, numerous meetings, discussions, and we worked through our issues. The goal of our team was to uh, achieve the direction of the board, uh, and I believe we, we met those goals. So with the uh, Teamsters, I'll go over each of the items uh, that we touched up on the, on the uh, changes to the contract. Now, these are expressed as tentative agreements. Both sides go back and forth. We come to agreements on language changes or co cost items, and we come to an agreement and reduce them to a tentative agreement at which we sign and present. We present to you, you ratify, they present to their uh, membership, and they do the same. Um, as of this point, I'm aware of the, um, the Teamsters have not yet been able to schedule a ratification. However, the two other units, the, the firefighters and the SEA, both have, and unanimously both units, both of those groups have, have voted to ratify. But we don't expect any issues with the Teamsters. It's just a matter of scheduling with their folks. So changes that we have, have made or proposed to make include uh, in the section, in the recognition section, this is something that we had talked about for a number of years, uh, to clean up some language in there on positions that are included uh, in their uh, uh, bargaining unit. Uh, there have been some confusion in some of those positions, uh, and we've added to clear up that, that uh, confusion. Um, there was some concern they had on a disciplinary section in our contract uh, that talks about uh, certain definitions of items at which they can be held accountable for, some definitions uh, that we cleaned up in there as well. It's language. It has to do with further definition of what is, for example, uh, immoral conduct. A little more specificity of the types of things that will be uh, considered that. Um, and some other issues about notification and others. Language issues, we felt they were very reasonable issues. Um, and the health insurance. Uh, as you know, health insurance has been an issue that we've been focused on for, for a period of time. Since I've been on board, uh, the board's direction is to work with the units to, to deal with certain issues. Um, one of the ones we dealt with was folks who um, get life, uh, life insurance, pardon me, medical health insurance from the town. Um, we work to make some folks opt off of that, and it's a beneficial thing to the town if folks opt off of that. Our number previously was very, very low. We adjusted that with uh, the, the police units before, and we have worked to uh, equalize that for other units as well. So included in this would be an opt-out provision. So if an employee has a single, a two-person, or family coverage, those will move now to be 2000 3000 or 4000 No, these plans can range anywhere from the ten, twelve thousand $12,000 range up to close to $30,000 range. So those numbers are, again, fairly short, small numbers for those types of plans. Uh, if, but if somebody comes off of it, it, it certainly is a, town's, a savings to the town. We've added new language to deal with uh, the issue that's been up for a number of times, the so-called Cadillac tax. This is one of those provisions that was included in the ACA, and that language essentially established a tax to be placed upon so-called Cadillac or high-benefit um, um, plans. Our plans, some of them, do approach that limit, and we're concerned because this tax is a 40% tax. Everything's somewhat still in flux, but it's been an issue we've been watching for a period of time. We felt it very important to protect the town from any of that tax hitting the taxpayers. So we've negotiated language in each of these contracts to say that if, in fact, uh, the ACA becomes law and if, in fact, one of the plans 
comes up against that 40%, that it's going to be the member who pays that 40% or more likely move to a plan which doesn't affect that. Again, the goal in that language is to protect the community so that we don't have to pay anything towards that uh, for that high plan, other than our ordinary share that we, we've agreed to. Um, additionally, in the health insurance, there are some changes, as you may recall, that came forward with regard to prescription plans that are no longer available. We need to transition uh, the language from these folks and move them off of a particular plan that's not no longer going to be offered. We're going to change some language and do that. Um, this Teamster contract includes that language, which moves them over. We'll see those numbers will reduce the cost to both those folks and to the town, resulting in a savings. We did negotiate in these circumstances essentially a bridge period where because previously they had certain benefits that they will be losing, quote unquote, we created this bridge with a certain amount of money. In each case, it's about $8,000 to be utilized on those cases where somebody can show that they're a loss of out of pocket for there. We've created that bridge, again, a relatively small amount of money for that, that amount. And then finally, in this contract, it's a proposal for a three year contract. The wage increases are 2.7 for each of those three years. And I will point out that one of the concessions we did working here was the contract that failed previously. Um, there were numerous positions that were well below market standard, and we made some adjustments. Those are all gone. These are straight now across the board, 272727. And that is uh, the total tentative agreement with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633. Any questions from the board? Regina, no? Yes? I just want to make a statement. I sat in for the first time on the negotiations, mostly for a learning process. And I just want to let everyone know the assistant town manager did a great job with town council and also the finance director sat in. And I believe we're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars by having this all done in-house now. So I am ready to... Uh, if I can just stall you one more second. I've got to read the language for it because the motion that I proposed you make includes both ratifying the tentative agreement and moving the Warren article, which I can read to you now, uh, okay. if, if that's okay with you, if you don't that's mind. That's fine, yes. Are there any other questions on the provisions in the TA? No. So what I would ask you then is to also the, move the Warren article forward. The Warren article reads as follows. Shall the town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year. Then there is a chart that begins and reads 2018 for 39 weeks, 2019 for 52 weeks, 2020 for 52 weeks, 2021 for 13 weeks. And each of those are on those lines 36,404, 53,483, 41,813, 8,975. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of $36,404 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. Now, I will point out as an aside, uh, there has been some discussion over the last several years of how we represent this. We did some significant research on this issue. Um, we, we spoke and met with the auditors. Uh, Ms. Pulliam did that for us. I did research looking up, reading again the Sanborn decision, and the language I just read to you is the language recommended with, by DRA, by our auditors, and a, a, many examples including Sanborn Regional, where that original decision came from, of the appropriate way to do this. So I'm very satisfied that this meets <coughs> the legal standard necessary, and all of our warrant articles will be similarly formatted. Questions on that? Okay, I would like to make a motion. I move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633 as outlined in the agreement and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval in the warrant article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. Second. Well, any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Now, Mr. Chairman, I will also note to you, just to, as an aside, that the total number of employees covered by that CBA for the Teamsters is 25 that are included in the costing items. Now, moving on to the next agreement, and that is between um, the 
tentative agreement between the town and the um, Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association. Um, that tentative agreement, again, deals with, we'll go from the top, those uh, insurance issues we dealt with before. That is the insurance for opt-out provision to 2000 3000 4000 for the similar ones as before. Um, language that cleaned up and identified the plans for that transition period we talked about. So the plans that were in the contract before are going to expire, and they'll move and migrate to the new plans, saving both they and us money. What was also part of uh, with this fire unit is an agreement to have them contribute more towards their health insurance. It was something that we, uh, we were able to achieve with the firefighters unit. We continue with these folks, and over the two years, they're going to move their uh, contribution rates so that they are paying a higher percentage rate moving towards uh, parity with other units in the, in the community as well. Um, we did add uh, previously uh, some, some education incentive language and some longevity pay. Uh, longevity pay was previously paid only to the secretary in the unit. Uh, we're now seeking to uh, reward folks for their longevity. You'll recall in this contract there's really one number. There's no progression as there are in many other units uh, for step raises and what have you. There is just one number. Um, the longevity pay would recognize folks with 10 years, 15, 20, and 25 years of service with a one-year stipend of 750, 1,000, 1,250, or 1,500 for achieving those milestones. This is a two-year agreement with 3% in each of those two years. Uh, the education incentives, we discussed this before, again, reaching some parity with regard to the other unions, the police union and such, for uh, a, an associate's a bachelor's degree and giving them um, a stipend, a yearly stipend, if they achieve one of those of 300 for an excess of 30 credit hours, 500 for an associate's or 1,000 for a bachelor's degree. Uh, and again, the duration of this is two year. There was some other language in there that, that we put in with regard to making it come into uh, the, the, that what the board's policy is in dealing with our 457 plans. There are certain things that the board has voted previously to allow non-union and other folks to take advantage of under the 457 plan. We've added that language to include the same policy, basically following the board's direction on that. That is the entirety of uh, that. Any questions with regard to the fire supervisor's tentative agreement? I will say there are 13 members with one unfilled position that's been unfilled for a number of years that are included in the costing items. And if it's all with you, Mr. Chairman, I'll read now the Warren article proposed. Yep. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association 3017, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. Again, the chart is there, and it says in 2018 for 39 weeks, estimated increase over previous level was 55514 For 2019, a full year of 52 weeks, 74283 In 2020, 13 weeks, an additional 10571 And to further raise and appropriate 55514 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would have been paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. Okay. I'll move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement reached between the Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association, Local 3017, as outlined in the agreement, and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval in the Warren article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Four all. And finally, the tentative agreement between um, the Town of Hampton and SEIU, Local 1984. These are the public works employees. Um, and there are 33 of them covered by this agreement. Um, the language we worked on, this is a, a three-year agreement at 3-3-3, three, 3% three, three, three for each of the three years. Um, we did some uh, work with them on um, work scheduling um, to allow, uh, in the summertime, they vary their schedule a little bit. We, we move some time in there at the approval of the director to allow the the vehicle mechanic to come in earlier on summer hours so that they can meet when the crews go out early if there's vehicle issues. We had no concerns with that issue. Um, we added also in here some uh, education st equivalent 
um, there is a program called the, the Rhodes Scholar Program, which encourages employees to go take a certain number of classes to become proficient in those things necessary to keep our roads and community running well. Um, and what we did was uh, work with these folks to set up stipends to encourage folks to go get those levels. There's a Road Scholar 1, Road Scholar 2, uh, Senior Road Scholar, and Master Road Scholar. Um, over the last several years, we've had several people who are Master Road Scholars, but several of those folks are retiring. It is beneficial. So Road Scholar 1 would be paid a $300 stipend if they should achieve that. These are non-cumulative. Once they achieve 2, it would be 450 If they achieve Senior, it would be 600 If they achieve Master, it could be $1,200. Um, the insurance issues, similar with the other groups, um, the stipends were increased for opt-outs of 2000 3000 4000 um, The excise tax language is in this, as it is in all three agreements, um, that protects our, our town from any kind of changes as a result of that. Um, the migration towards uh, the uh, uh, change in prescription plans and that uh, um, $8,000 uh, transition program is in this one as well. Um, some leave administration, just language with regard to allowing them to take their leave in smaller chunks as long as it's approved by the director. Um, some language to change with bereavement that includes um, a niece and nephew, which were included in other contracts, not in this, just a cleanup issue there. And we increased the stipend with regard to the boots and safety shoes that they wear on duty to include go from 150 a year annually, they're eligible, to $300 a year that they're, they're able to have. Again, the duration is a three-year for this. Questions with regard to the, to the Public Works Union? Regina? I have no questions. No. Uh, I will have some comments in the discussion after the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And <coughs> if I should read the Warren article at this time, shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and State Employees Association of New Hampshire, SEIU Local 1984, AFL-CIO-CLC, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year. Again, the chart, 2018, 39 weeks, estimated increase over the previous year level, $60,000, 679. 2019, a full 52 weeks, estimated increase over the previous year level of 121,796. 2020, again, 52-week period, 97,501 over the previous year's level. And finally, the 13 weeks in 2021 would be $18,910 above the previous year's level. And to further raise and appropriate $60,679 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increased salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. I'm ready for motion. Just one question. How many individuals are included under this? 33. In 33? This year. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, it so. Is out of these three, the largest group. Okay, you made a motion. Do we have a second? Well, she's going to read it. I'm going to make a motion oh. right now. I move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the State Employees Association of New Hampshire, Inc., SEIU, Local 1984, AFL, CIO, CLC, as outlined in the agreement and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval in the Warren article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. Second. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, all the members of our labor units in the Town of Hampton, our employees. Uh, they're tough jobs. They're dangerous jobs. Uh, and these men and women show up every single day, and many of them are town residents, and many of them are long-tenured employees. And uh, every employee uh, in this day and age has options, and Hampton is certainly just one of those platforms that allows for them to sell their labor, if you will, in the marketplace. And again, we've got the chief of police here tonight. We've had public works in. We've had a fire um, um, equipment or personnel issue that's going to be put off for next year. These are extraordinarily tough, and dangerous <coughs> jobs. And on the uh, one of the bargaining units, uh, significant revenue producing right in this very building where these uh, men and women produce and administrate. So I am um, enthusiastically supporting that. Uh, our negotiating team with the passing uh, of Wanda Robertson uh, in that uh, a sudden vacancy. Mr. Sullivan uh, was appointed uh, uh, to assume myriad responsibilities as he retired from the police department as a police chief and a career officer uh, and a tenured career there. Uh, 
And he's come up here and assumed uh, not only Wanda's job, but his functioning now is human resources, personnel director, assistant town manager, and is helped with, along with town council as they have co-worked uh, together to mitigate uh, the burdening and extraordinary expense that went to outside council that was well over s six figures, well over $100,000 a year, that went to outside attorneys which is a substantial part of our, our then legal budget, which was five years ago. That has been driven downward and downward and downward. It has is, it is resulted in, in uh, some great negotiations and some great tentative agreements this year that uh, we enthusiastically support and will be unanimous. And it, it has developed a cohesion within the town. So I commend these two men before us. I commend the, the labor representatives and the negotiations that went on. And uh, the Board of Selectmen that, that chose to fill one spot and in interest of the taxpayer, the interest of the end result, the end state, and representing the town of Hampton has shaved six figures off of an outside legal where outside counsel was coming in to negotiate um, on behalf of the town of Hampton and sucking up hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal fees. And uh, that is a, 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 a good part of our history that is gladly gone. So again, uh, thank you, you two gentlemen. You've done extraordinary work. Thank you, Selectman Barnes, for stepping in and exhibiting that. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for your leadership on the issue. Okay, all in favor? 4-0, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.